Welcome, everybody, for another example of Health Talks with Dr. Trin. The one show, maybe the only show, that tries to take all the complexities and questions in our lives, turn them into some simply simple to understand ideas and explanations from the man who seems to do that better than most, Dr. Trin. Hey, doctor. Hey, Pa. How are you? I am always confused uh, at, about health issues these days. I do not know uh, what I should be doing or how I should be doing things, <laughs> and one of them has to be with coronavirus. <laughs> All right, we talked in the last show about are we ready? Are we going to? Are we going to gauge whether we're ready? What are we? Are we going to shut it down if it gets out of control? All these kinds of big policy issues that we're still trying to sift our way through. And the and the takeaway was well, whether we like it or not, as you said, we're going. So we better be ready. And today I want to talk about how do we get ready. Uh, so let's talk about what are, what are you telling patients, or what are you going to do uh, when they open the doors and say go back out again. First thing I'm gonna go do is uh, go exercise at the gym that I really missed. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and that's a good question. So will you feel comfortable? Let's say tomorrow, next week, right. next month, they say gyms are okay. Like they are in Georgia that right now, we're doing this in the middle of, uh, uh, towards the end of April here. George has already said Just, you can go to the gym. Will you go rush out to the gym because you want to exercise, or will you continue to exercise at home or walk at home or do other things here? So I've been walking uh, almost almost every day with, mm -hmm. uh, with Jenny, with Lizzie, and uh, try to do about three miles at least a day. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but I believe that for us who survive this virus... <laughs> that's a, that's coming, a hopeful crew. We're the we're, ones who survive. We're coming yeah. out of this chubbier... Yeah. Because the fridge is right there, and it's hard to social distance against the fridge. Yeah. It's so close. <laughs> Good point. Good point. So, uh, so we I probably have... gained some weight, and we probably weren't all that healthy to begin with. Should Is there any kind of food? Is there any kind of regimen that we should be on? Is there What's the COVID diet that we – are we just going to go back and Ooh. start eating? Because we've been eating a lot of burgers and stuff like that. Yeah, I hear McDonald's is like giving out free food to uh, – <laughs> Healthcare workers. They are, yeah. I, I was scratching my head. Should healthcare workers take advantage of this <laughs> free food from McDonald's, or <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. right? It's it's kind of like getting free cigarettes. Where, well, we don't know. want to look like the zombies behind you. They're looking out your window right now at you. Yeah, that's they the COVID are. survivors. We looked. We look gaunt. We look. Yes. We look. Uh, yes. When, when we, we look leave. diseased. We look like zombies. We're right. we're not sure where we're going or what we're doing. So if you want, don't want to end up looking like a bunch of zombies wandering around the planet, what would you tell patients to do in the first I, month? I would tell them to that this is a, a reset and a restart mm. now that you've been at home for five weeks with with time to, to think about life and think about things and and hopefully not worry too much about uh the finances which i know many people have been hard all on our minds without a here. job right um, number one thing this, is we want to be safe we don't want to get sick yeah. we certainly don't want to die or have anybody we know die so we're scared and then right. on top of it uh, most of us are worried about money so well, yeah. as we get, let's talk about the mental, before we get to the, the physical health part of it, right. let's get to the mental health, because I don't think much has been talked about this. Um, what, have we weathered this storm well? well? I guess we don't know yet, but has mental, has alcohol abuse gone up and drug abuse because uh, we're depressed and scared and stuck at home? Uh, has uh, physical, are, are we beating each other up more? Are we being mean to each other because we're stuck? We're getting on each other's nerves, or will there, will there be more cases of abuse and other I unfortunate heard. mental health, uh, yes. depression, suicide, all that kind of mental I health issues? Heard, right. I have heard of an increase in, in child abuse, unfortunately. I've heard of an increase in uh, anxiety and depression yeah. and, and suicidal uh, ology. Uh, a lot of it could be because of finances. A lot of it could be because folks are stuck at home with folks that they normally aren't stuck at home together 24 seven. Right, and, I, and I'll uh, give you a perfect example of that. So my uh, daughter is in her uh, late 20s, uh, 
her husband and she have a little condo uh, uh, that they in Orange County here. And it's a little uh, uh, three bedroom condo that they bought, but they couldn't really afford it. So the only way they could afford it was to bring in some roommates. So they're all crammed into one room and they have now a newborn baby plus a wow. five year old. So four of them are in living in one back bigger bedroom. Uh -huh. Then there are two roommates living in the other two bedrooms. That's four adults and two kids, one of which is a crying baby. Let me tell you, it's a little tense over there these days. I can only imagine. And, and stress and anxiety has not been talked about a lot. No. Uh, as it should have. But, um, but I, I did a talk, uh, I think not too long ago on Facebook Live here to specifically address uh, anxiety and stress. Uh, there are different ways to deal with that. One is that although we are home alone, and, and s physically isolated. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be isolated emotionally. Mm. Uh, we have the ability to uh, still be in contact with family through, through uh, Zoom chats like this, mm -hmm. through Facebook Live, through simply picking up the phone. It's really important to be socially connected during these times of isolation. And I'll give you an interesting example. When this first started, we all started switching to Zoom like we are today here. Right. not just for interviews, but to suddenly check with your grandchildren, and your children, your f loved ones, your friends, your family, whatnot. We wanted to see people, not just talk to them. And I found that when the conversation was over, okay, we, you're okay, good, just checking in. It's almost like neither side wanted to hang out. Don't leave me alone in the dark here. Right. I'm scared to stay. Don't leave me. Yes. And so uh, will that hopefully continue on where we'll feel the need to be more because for a long time we we're getting disconnected right. more and more we're working at home we're busy we're you know we don't take time to talk to people I, I can't tell you how many people have told me and have called me that i haven't talked to in a long time and they say the same which thing is, i'm reaching out to people i haven't heard in a long time maybe because i got nothing to do but maybe great. yeah which is great we have we have just learned the value of zoom yeah and, right. and not just connecting with our friends and family, but connecting with physicians, connecting with doctors. Ah. Uh, many of our patients are connecting with their doctors on Zoom now. I know that in memorial care, uh, physicians are talking to patients on Zoom, just like a regular patient office visit, mm -hmm. except now you're watching and talking over, you know. Over what do you think of this uh, trend towards telemedicine? It's been happening for a while. This seems like it's going to accelerate it. Uh, it doesn't seem like that's going to go away. And can, not. can you really tell me when I when I say, well, what is this thing right here? And then we zoom in on it or. Uh, oh, yeah. As, as long as you put that little camera close to the little wart there and I can see it, mm -hmm. I can certainly help you with that. Uh, but we are not going back on telemedicine. Uh, now that patients and physicians have discovered how mm -hmm. convenient it is, mm -hmm. what we've noticed uh, and what we've noticed is that, you know, the, do you know how many minutes a patient gets to speak to face to face with their doctor? I'm when gonna, I'm gonna guess doctor? it's five minutes or 10 minutes or something like that. It's about seven minutes. Yeah. And do you know what it takes to get to that seven minute face to face time for a patient? Oh, well, you gotta drive there. That takes a certain amount of time. You gotta sit there. That takes a certain amount of time. You gotta fill out some paperwork. That takes a certain amount of time. Yes, and oftentimes you got to wait a month before you even get in with the yeah, doctor. Yeah, right, exactly. Right, right. right. right you got a car, you're on hold, mm -hmm. uh, you got to make an appointment, mm -hmm. and then you got to take time off work. Yes, right. right? Exactly. I or, can't just or, go in the conference room and say, hey, look, doc, what is this thing here? You that's know? right. Or you got to find babysitting if you yeah. got kids. If right. you're older and you're no longer drive, you got to find transportation. Mm, boy, you're making this hard. So all of right. that seems like a. A godsend if we can somehow get a hold of you. But what it, it, you're the physician is it is it can't be as good as seeing the patient face to face or is am I just an old luddite? It, it I mean what do you I, it, you don't get I, to listen to my chest. You don't get to look down my throat. Maybe you don't get to look in my yes, ear. That's correct. But I would say that eighty percent of the time I don't need to stick a stethoscope on you to figure out what you got or to handle what your problem is. 80% mm. of the time by just listening, getting your history, finding out what's going on, 
we can make a diagnosis most of the time. Do you read the patient's face if I'm happy, oh, yeah. sad, scared? Uh, in pain, not in pain. Right. Right. right? And, and yes, patients do need to come in for their physical where we got to listen to the heart and lungs. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, if you're, if you're coming back in to review your lab results, Mm. Why would I have to stick a stethoscope on you? That's true if you're, too. If yeah. you're coming back in to discuss the referral from your specialist, why do I have to stick a special, you know, a stethoscope on you? Mm -hmm. I would say over 50% of the time, and, and this is reports that I get from my own physicians, my own friends mm -hmm. in, in the medical group we work with. Most of the time, they can handle the patient's problem through a video chat without sticking a stethoscope on a patient. And with telemedicine, all of a sudden, I have cut out the entire process of making the phone call, waiting in line, driving to the doctor's office, mm -hmm. taking time off work, looking for babysitting. I've cut the entire process of inefficiency and ineffectiveness. Okay, right? you're selling me on this thing because I've always kind of wondered, is it as good? Am I getting uh, just secondhand care, but I'm getting it sooner, I'm getting it quicker? Is it any cheaper? I hate to talk money. I know you guys oh, never want to yeah. talk about money. Heck yeah, it's cheaper because because you're not you're not having to deal with paying for a physician's overhead mm -hmm. if you, all you had to do was chat with him, mm -hmm. right? And and I think over time it it will lower healthcare costs if if most doctors can handle problems with patients through a Zoom visit like we're doing now. Right. Now, granted, there are times when I have to listen to your lungs mm -hmm. and listen to your heart. When when I got to check out the hemorrhoid, you can't put that video there. No, you know, I was going to say, I'm thinking of certain places. Right. I don't want to put a camera here. Yeah, 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 exactly, right? So there are times when we have to examine you, but there are many cases, many times when we don't have to examine you, and I can send that refill in after talking to you in, talking to you in Zoom, that medication refill. Yeah. How many times have I had patients tell me, Doc, I'm on my last several pills. The doctor won't refill unless I see him. Yeah, all the time. Or her. All the time. Because they want to make sure you're still alive and you still yeah. look okay. And, and, and if that's all it takes is to see and talk with your patient, turn on the Zoom button. Okay, right. so telemedicine, maybe this is going to move. I hadn't thought about that. That's going to accelerate this, continue the push towards it. And we're going to enter, as we get more comfortable with it, we're going to enter a brave new world here. All right, so that's from the doctor-patient relationship. Let's talk a little bit of, and we talked touched on mental health. Anything else we could or should be doing to handle? Because I'm wondering if there isn't a boomerang, post-traumatic stress. You know, you think you're, I remember my wife years ago had a car accident, really bad one, somebody T-boned her. Unfortunately, she lived and she wasn't injured, but the, the car spun and she was really hit hard. And I got there quickly after it happened got out of the car, and of course, what'd she say? I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Right. It wasn't until a month later she started feeling the whiplash and the neck pains and everything right. here. Uh, there was a deferred, in that, in that moment, you don't feel it or see right. it. I, and it's the same thing with your brain. I'm wondering, we think, okay, I'm good, I got through it, I'm okay. Are we gonna have some sort of post-traumatic stress, some delayed oh, yeah. reaction to this? Oh yeah, the, the, the next time you're you're watching a movie and the next person next to you is starts coughing yeah. you're gonna be like oh you you'll think twice right exactly <laughs> right? or or, or yeah. somebody with a fever walking around you'll think twice about the uh you know if that should be done or not if that person shouldn't be home or not right i see it when i walk around my neighborhood and if i get too close people are looking like whoop oh, oh. you know I, I'm, I'm provoking a fear reaction just because i invaded the six foot space or something here and they're looking at me who are you are you okay and my kids yes. say i mean we're we're more fearful than ever of coming in contact with people right. and that's got to have some reaction so we, i think the, the one thing that i think will change is that we as a society will be more comfortable walking around with a face mask in the future yeah that was the next thing i was going to get at here you know in in asia it's an accepted practice maybe because okay. they have higher levels of pollution as well in china and other places but it's it's just it's part it's of a norm. fashion it's the norm people walk around in face masks all the time japan china whatever here mm -hmm. oh everybody's uncomfortable it fogs up my glasses i look weird and now i know they're rushing to come out with more fashionable attire right. with funny faces on them or something here right right but will that be the norm and should it be the it, norm is that does that really help is this is this a good idea well i i bet you if we walked around during the flu season with face masks 
my guess is we will tamper down the the rate of the flu because uh, it keeps the as you expel these airborne particles it catches them right if the mask sure. is tight enough sure know, yeah. uh, just just try sneezing into a face mask and you'll feel it right it's going to catch a lot of the airborne obviously it's not going to catch a hundred percent of everything right but if you are sick and and you're out shopping at costco maybe it's not a bad idea to have a face mask on during the flu season what right. about wearing hand, uh, everybody says the same thing. And we all rushed, I got some gloves here somewhere. There you go, look what I went and bought gloves. You can see here. Ooh, I like them, they're black. Black and they're kind of rubbery so I could touch my, I'm, they work yeah. on my cell phone and they act. Uh, I like it. Now, I went and got these and a bunch of people said, well, that's stupid. It's just, you're still going to touch the bug. Something's got the bug on it <laughs> and you're still gonna touch your nose or your eye or whatever with it here. What good as long does as this you do? don't do it with your glove. <laughs> yeah, right, because the glove, it's not coming through the skin, so why do I need to cover a glove? What do you think mm. about gloves? I, I, I think uh, I've seen maybe folks walking around the supermarket with gloves on. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing wrong with that because uh, you are pushing that, that cart. Right. Right, so you either have to sanitize the cart right. with, with wipes or you wear some gloves while you're shopping. But then you then, can't touch yourself because it's getting the bug into your eye your nose your right. ear your mouth somewhere that gets into your body here right and and you don't want to touch yourself anyway so the glove is like a psychological reminder that you shouldn't mm -hmm. be touching yourself well I, it sounds a little weird to say don't touch yourself but uh you know it, but it's true it and does. i can't imagine how many times i find myself going, oh what am i doing oh what am i doing oh uh, right. And it's like oh geez i just you know what i'm all so many it's, times i do this all throughout the day it's actually been studied through research that we touch our face subconsciously without thinking about it multiple times a day. I do. And this oh, is how yeah. the virus gets in here, here, and the eyes. And we're like this, or we're like this, or I'm messing with my hair. Yeah, right? I got an itch in my eye. I got a something in my nose. I don't want to pick my nose, but I got a little something in there. And, you know. That's right, multiple times a day. All right, so face mask, yes. Gloves, maybe, yes. Uh, no problem with that. We've got to get over the fashion statement part of it and, and be doing that for a while. Anything else we Telemedicine could... is here to stay. Telemedicine and, is here to and stay. It, and it's going to uh, continue. And it's going to be, it's going to take medicine to the next level mm -hmm. for patient access, for convenience, for effectiveness, and for efficiency. Ah. It's going, telemedicine will get rid of the, the three I's. I call it inconvenience, inefficiency, mm -hmm. and ineffectiveness. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to get rid of the entire, uh, entire layer of waste. I call it waste. Mm -hmm. That that takes place before you actually see your physician mm -hmm. in a in a physician encounter with a, a patient the only valuable part of that entire encounter is the actual encounter the five right? minutes the seven yeah, minutes yeah, seven yeah. minutes everything the entire everything before that is designed for that one encounter yeah if you can if you can eliminate everything before oh, that i'm just an itch on my right. nose here i better go get a <laughs> hanky here or something if you, man. if you can eliminate everything before that uh, by cutting out. Uh, so let me ask you another okay. question. Uh, not yeah. just not just inconvenient, and what was it? The other three we got inconvenient, inefficient. inefficient. So it's a way, right. lot of waste of time, and, yeah, and inconvenient. It's not effective. Not as effective as. What about the impulse? We're kind of trying to come with another eye, not to go at all. Such a pain. Cost too much. Got to take off work. Yeah. Forget it. Yes, and we delay care because we don't want to take time off work, we can't find babysitting, mm -hmm. or we can't find transportation if we're no longer driving. Mm -hmm. We delay care getting to the doctor's office because of all that that barrier. That's that me. Waste. I put it off every way I can. I'm the last thing, I'm, I gotta be really, really sick before I go see you or anybody. I'll, right? I'll tell myself, ah, it's nothing. Exactly, because, yeah. because you're hardwired to think about how inefficient ineffective it is to wait for a month just to get your needs take now imagine if you can just zoom your doctor yeah in, in a 10 minute i would probably converse more with my doctor which would probably yeah. be good see i'm touching myself again here we gotta stop this yes yes um, telemedicine takes care of that okay so now last question as we wrap up here we talked about we're going to continue to wear masks and gloves 
We're going to continue to social distance. Some of us probably should continue to stay home if you've got some underlying condition. Just because they say it's safe, yes. maybe you don't go out. Maybe I, I right. think I think we're going to do that anyway. I think we're going to have a slow recovery. Whether no matter how quickly they open, as we said in the last episode, I'm not sure we're all rushing to go out right. there in the crowd. I'm more right. worried about how we get better. Um, many people, I, I like what Governor Cuomo is saying in New York. I'm, I'm a big fan of his right now. And he said, you know, this is a chance for us, as you said in the last show, to reset and rethink why do we do things the way we do? Not just how can we get, not just how can we continue to practice safe social right. distancing, not just how can we Im call the doctor more often and easier and more effectively and, and maybe not as expensively, all this stuff. But right. how do we live our lives better so we're better we're stronger. We we are right. more resistant to the bug, and that means eating better and exercising better. I don't want to hear that's, that right now. Oh my God. That's right. How? What can we do to strengthen ourselves, boost and help our own immune system against the next bug that comes that has no cure, yeah. and no vaccine, just like this one. Right. Right. So, so that is you know, a process of thinking going forward once we normalize with life. We need to talk about prevention. We need to talk mm -hmm. about being proactive. Mm -hmm. We need to talk about wellness rather than only treating disease. Yes, and I think you've laid out the next couple months of conversations here on Health Talks because that's what yes. too often we, we only come to you when we have a problem and we're not trying to prevent problems. So right now we're gonna try and be more preventative. We're gonna space, we're gonna wear masks, we're gonna do some other things we hadn't done before. We're gonna be a little more uh, quick to call the doctor, maybe because it's easier, more effective. But we've got, right. to, we've got to strengthen ourselves somehow to fight yes. off not just this bug if it comes back, but the next one. That's right, and in the next few months, we will speak about that at uh, OC Talk Radio because uh, because we have to educate our patients. The seven minutes that you have with your doctor has has zero time for prevention. Yeah, right. It's, and and we, we've talked about that before. We're going to do shows on that because I think that's right. the failure of Western medicine, as they say. It's pay per service. So as long as I'm sick, you come in and ching, and that's how right. you make money, and that's how I and I only therefore go when I really have to because it's I got to swipe a credit card. There's a there's a charge attached to everything right. I do, and right. and so it's great if I break a leg, but does it make me stronger and healthier to survive the next pandemic? I don't know. That's right. That's right. So that'll be our focus, Paul, going forward. Uh, education based on clinical research, based on data. On yeah. ways to strengthen our exercise food because I know you do lots of talks about this. This is something yeah. that's near and dear to your heart. Healthy brain food, um, right. uh, exercise, um, um, mental preparation, mm -hmm. maybe vitamins, maybe supplement. I don't know if any of that stuff that does any good or anything. Well, we talk about that in future shows. I always wonder is that stuff worth anything or not. Um, so we will. that's the that's the focus going forward. When we get through the immediate problem today. We're going to continue to do some of these things that we've already trained ourselves to do, telemedicine, mass, whatever or not. I'm not sure we're really ready to use this as a reset button to rethink the way we live our lives and to really make ourselves stronger for the next one. Right. Well, we, we have to. Um, this, is a, <clears throat> this is another chance, another opportunity to uh, refocus, reset, and, uh, and come out better than what we were coming in. Well, from your lips to God's ears, sir, I always appreciate your positive attitude about this, your simple talks on this, and your really insights into the bigger picture and not just the immediate problem. Because too often in the doctor's world, it is just, I'm gonna focus on this little five minutes. I don't have time to look at all the other holistic issues adding to this. I'm just here to fix this one problem right now here. Right, right. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, how do people reach or find you if they want to uh, reach out more? Are you open to you have a Facebook page. If, We're on it. Here. Yeah. Yeah. If uh, I have a Facebook page, it's called uh, Health Talks with uh, Dr. Trim. Mm -hmm. Real simple. Mm -hmm. um, if they're interested in uh, my weekly uh, email blast that I email patients with, there's a uh, there's a, a website they can go to to simply put in their email. 
It's uh, coronavupdate.com. Oh, okay. Well, there you yeah. go. That's something. Really, Corona V for virus. Uh, Update.com. Update.com. That's it. They go there and they put in their uh, their email and they'll uh, I'll email them once a week. And you're always days. talking around the county here. You work with Alzheimer's. Yeah. You work with Memorial Care. You do clinical research. You're everywhere. And we're so thrilled to have somebody with your broad experience and your simple uh, explanations for what seem to be confusing and perplexing problems. I think I think we need to make health talks part of our weekly regimen. We need to, not just talking here at this show, but talking to our physicians, talking to ourselves, talking to our friends about how we can be healthier. Because if anything else, it woke an awful lot of us up that we're not really ready physically, mentally to fight right. off these things, which aren't going away apparently here. Oh, yes. All right. So thanks. good to talk to you. <laughs> we'll talk to you next time. Take care. You've been listening to another example of Health Talks with Dr. Trin right here in Orange County's only community radio station, OCTalkRadio.net.